What's up, y'all? Today I'm starting off with uh, speeding up my Windows builds. Uh, this morning I did, uh, I got my Linux builds to be so much faster. Started off being like five and a half minutes long and got them down to about three and a half minutes long using some pre-compiled headers. My Mac versions always use pre-compiled headers. Um, it's super convenient. Uh, Linux, I found this awesome thing called Cotire or Cotire, something like that. This is super great too. It's so convenient. On Windows, there's one little thing you got to do where you got to add a header file to every single one of your source files, which is not convenient, but it's going to be a uh, should help should help to speed up these builds. So while um while I get this started, I think I'm I think the first thing I should do is set a baseline. So let me just rebuild all clean this solution and build it. Get my, uh, my phone. Do a little stopwatch. I'm not sure exactly how to time things on Windows, so do a stopwatch. Start. There we go. Okay, so while streaming, Doing a rebuild all on the debug mode. Um, hopefully I can pay attention <laughs> and see when this actually uh, changes. Um, and then the next thing I'll need to do is change the properties of the solution and then go edit every single source file to add in a pre-compiled header. So I can at least do the every single source file part. Yeah. We'll do mate source. No, actually mate dot. And find all references to include kit.h, which is kind of like the most important, most fundamental header file. Let's see, so far we're at one minute, 20 seconds. How you doing there, build? You only got like five or six files done. <laughs> one minute in. See, this is why I'm trying to spill, speed this up. I should mention though that this actually runs runs a lot faster when I'm not streaming because streaming eats up CPU. This is oh let's get this minimized here. I don't know why that doesn't minimize. Sometimes oh wow this is doing a full surge. What's up, Rocket Bunny? How you doing today, buddy? What you doing? What's new? Two minutes in. This is going to take forever. It's Visual Studio. It is. It's Visual Studio. You're always claiming it. You got it, man. First. Bam. Found 66 results. Okay, so if I change this now. I don't think it'll save everything. Let's open up... Uh, Current headers dot h. Oh, that's current. We don't want to change that one. We want to change this one. Or iOS. Or Linux. Not Mac. How come the chat view is squashed? The chat view is squashed. squashed. Why is that? 
<laughs> Chad Bu is squashed. What happened to you, Chad Bu? I swear I didn't change anything. I just ramble. But I will admit that Game Show has been doing some funny stuff. Every time I start up, it goes wah, wah, and squishes everything. So maybe we had it's just a new version of Game Show. I can fix that. Hey, what? Hey, look at that. All I did was click on this and it fixed itself. Did it fix it for you guys? I didn't do anything. Pretty good software. Let's see how we're doing on the build here. Still building. Four and a half minutes down. God damn. Looks better? All right, that's good. Looks great. Right on. What's up, Flint? Welcome to the stream, Flint. So if you're just joining, what I'm working on today, uh, I sped up my Linux builds like crazy faster by using this awesome thing that does pre-compiled headers called Kotire or Kotire or something like that. It works with CMake and it's awesome. So um, I've always had pre-compiled headers on, on Mac and now I just, my last platform to get this working on is Windows. So that'll really speed up some builds um, on all three platforms that I'm normally building on. So this will be pretty awesome to have this all finished. So look, it looks like source is the only one I really need to worry about here. Yeah. Not even projects, windows. I guess projects windows would also be one to do. So let's close this and then go mate, just mate source. There we go. It opened up every single one of these files. I guess that's okay. Because TextMate has a save all feature. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take every single source file. So the, the this guy, I don't like this about, about Microsoft Visual Studio, but basically to use a pre-compiled header in Microsoft Visual Studio, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have to include in every single one of the files that you want to use the pre-compiled header, you have to include it. So I'm going to call mine pc.h. Courage, yes. Oh no. Maybe I'll even call it pc.h with the capitals. So correct, please correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure you have to do this. Most of the time you call it standard AFX. I hate that name because it's so Windowsy. So I'm just going to go with PC for precompiled dot header. <clears throat> but I'm pretty sure this is, this is what you have to do. And then I'll make, oh, each one of these will have that. And then I'll need to make this PC dot H. Oh, do, am I going to do it there? No, I need to do it actually in source. Wait, are we still building? Still building. What's the time so far? Seven and a half minutes so far compiling the, the game on Windows. Man, that's slow. Yeah, there's Xcode. There's still Xcode. Don't don't get me wrong. We're we're gonna. <laughs> You're like I don't want Xcode. Tied to Xcode. Get rid of it. Okay, let's make this change to all these files. So we'll go include kit.h, change all those to include kit.h and include pc.h. Pretty sure I can replace all those without it without it messing up the build on Windows. Um, oh, for reference to, it took Cocos an hour and a half to build on your laptop. Oh my God, I know Cocos is so huge. That's why I that's why I recommended you would you just build it once. Build it once, take the libraries, stash them somewhere, use the libraries from then on. Okay, I think I could change all these, but I'm just gonna save that. 
There isn't. Yeah, that's another big problem with Kokos. The, doc the documentation is weak, to say the least. Oh, but what I'm trying to... Oh, what I was saying here is uh, I've got a pretty sweet build system going on here where I can build all three platforms without leaving my home uh, platform using VMware. And so in VMware, I launch, I launch VMware and then, and then launch each one of these sub platforms or whatever. And they all use the same folder. So they all are referencing my Songbringer folder um, on Mac. And because they're using VMware's like networking or networked file share thing, um, they, there's no problems with Windows saving files here. So I can actually, when I build, it actually builds everything into this build folder. And I've got a Linux release folder, a Linux debug, Win32 debug, Win32 release, and then of course the the Mac versions too. So everything for all three platforms all shares the same folder, which is really, really nice. Because if I want to go and edit my code in Xcode and then go back and just rebuild it in Visual Studio, because I don't know all the shortcuts and everything for Visual Studio, I can do that. Or if I, you know, if I don't want to deal with Linux not having a GUI or a good IDE, then I can just use Xcode, use that ID that ID that I'm familiar with. And then just go back and rebuild it on Linux. You decided to make your own documentation for Cocos? What's the advantage of 64-bit? It's faster. The disadvantage, though, is that it's less compatible. So your 64-bit applications won't run on a 32-bit system. But your 32-bit applications run on both systems. Oh my god, we're almost done! We're at 10 and a half minutes so far. It still hasn't linked. Oh, for your own game engine. Okay. Nice. Anyways. Ah, it's almost done. So I did touch pc.h. Let's drag that into my Xcode project. Songbringer source pc.h. This will be my precompiled header file. Oh, it's creating the library! Eleven and a half minutes. It took a whole minute. Just since it like mentioned main.cpp. Why exactly is C so fast? That's a pretty broad question. C is pretty fast because it's really simple. There's a lot less complexity to its header files, so that's why it's a lot faster to compile. Well, but you're talking about running? It's because it, it there's a lot of great optimizations for C, so your the assembly code that it generates is pretty fast. Yeah, Farpoke. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You're right, but it does, okay, so stop, there we go, 12 minutes, 15 seconds. All right, there's our baseline. All I want to see is does it build faster once I enable pre-compiled headers. So let's clean this build and do the pre-compiled header stuff. All right, so I want to copy this into my Xcode project so I can quickly reference it in my IDE of choice. Don't, I, I don't assign it to any of my targets, so it doesn't ever build anything. Um, and so since I'm going to be using this on every single uh, platform... What's up, LASIK? Yeah, you're exactly. That's why I wrote a lot of kernels are written in C. Because it compiles faster and it's more portable than C++ even. So we're going to do something like this. Like if def win32... And, if, and then I just want to include kid.h. Pretty simple. Okay, and then I'm going to change every single one of my source files. Replace all. Whoops, that didn't work. Or was it just this one that didn't work? 
Oh yeah, they all worked. Okay, so let's go file, save all. <clears throat> and that should be good. Now let's set up the um, Visual Studio to reference it. I wish, were, I wish there was a way you didn't have to add a header file to every single one of your source files for Visual Studio to recognize a pre-compiled header. Every other compiler doesn't do this, doesn't require this. Well, not every other, but the GCC and the Xcode clang doesn't. Ahoy, what's up, salad dogs? Where do you enable pre-compiled headers? Is it C++? Here we go, pre-compiled headers. Pre-compiled header. All configurations. Create, use. Use. Just use, I guess. And then I want this just to be pc.h. Is that all I need to do? What's the difference between create and use? Does anybody know? Is my mouse big now? What's up with What's up with game show today? Let's start this thing building. Well, yeah, that's in a in a virtual machine. Okay, this is definitely not working. It compiles a hell of a lot faster when I'm not streaming too. So that's a, that's two big things there. It's I'm streaming and I'm in a virtual machine. Well, I guess I have to use create because it's like yeah, it doesn't exist, man. I don't know. I'm kind of winging it here. Oh, it's just the Windows cursor? Oh. Huh. Oh, it is kind of big. <laughs> That's funny. So I have to do a create then and not use let's, let's see if that works all configurations create yeah I'm just trying to get any kind of performance improvement in building it on Windows the speed at which it builds without compromising the build of course okay let's try this again build YC is incompatible with multiprocessing. What's that mean? Oh, you can't use multiple processes? Oh, that's why it's only compiling one at a time. Oh, it didn't even work. Inter internal error has occurred in the compiler. What? You can't compile two files at once when you en enable pre-compiled headers? This is why I don't use Visual Studio often. 
Okay, what the hell just happened? Internal compiler error? Fatal error. An internal error has occurred in the compiler. Thanks for letting me know. Try simplifying or changing the program near the locations listed above. Jesus, man. This is why I don't use Microsoft products often. Yes, I would like this too. I would like to leverage pre-compiled headers and multi-process compilation. What? Two projects instead of one? I guess I don't understand YC versus YU. I need to figure that out. Oh, you just need to use YU. Oh. Okay. An internal error has occurred in the compiler again. That's probably because it's like, oh, you can't do that, man. You can't use it. You can't do that. All right. Well, well, I shouldn't be talking so much trash. So, what the hell? I put this and it didn't compile last time. I just want to use a pre-compiled header. What's up, H &E? Okay, so now it complains a lot. It's like, hey, fatal error, cannot open pre-compiled header file. Oh man, I guess I need to freaking do like a pre-compiled, Visual Studio, pre-compiled header, tutorial. Here, help me out, somebody help me out. Set your project up to use pre-compilators with the YU. Create your file, set that to be your pre-compilator file. Include it at the top, that's what I did, I did all this. Oh. There's one place I didn't do this in main.cpp. Yeah, I probably am. I'm misunderstanding this. How the pre compiled header works in VC. The header file is not the output, it's the input, right? I knew that. PC files, H file is the output that's actually used, containing the headers from the header file. Right, right, but yeah, how do I get this all set up? Kidservices.h, does that also use it? No, okay. So do I have to have a pre-compiled CPP file?
Let's try it. I don't know if I need this, but let's try it out. Touch projects windows pc.cpp. Okay, so I'll drag this into my Exo project, just so I know I have it. Don't add it to the targets. Oh yeah, see there we go. This is probably this is probably it. Then I just don't have this file. Okay, now I'll add this to my. Visual Studio project. That work. Looks like I got that. All right. <clears throat> now, Songbringer source pc.h. Let's also throw this into the into here. Oops. <laughs> I'm trying to drag it from Mac. Oops. Am I employed? I guess you could technically say yes, I am employed. I'm employed by my own company making Songbringer. Thanks to the people that supported me on the Kickstarter. Once again, thank you! Thank you Kickstarter backers! And thank you everyone else that's pre-ordered the game since then. Y'all are keeping me afloat! Y'all are keeping me employed! Y'all are making this game a reality. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see if this actually set up the files correctly. I want to go to where, yeah, song reader vch hvc proj file. And where does it have pc.cpp? It didn't save it yet. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Um, but I was just trying to see first if it actually linked these files in correctly, like because I'm on, I'm on a kind of special thing with a network share here. It's using Z colon, so I wanted to make sure that it actually linked right to. The, let's just uh, save this project. Save it. Yes, save. There. Um, so let me check that. Isn't N the next one? There it is. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. So Visual Studio was very smart and referenced it correctly with relative paths. So there's no worries there. It even cleaned up the filters file, which I had messed up, I guess. Thank you, Visual Studio. Okay, that looks good. Oh, did I not do that? Oh, you mean just save all from here? That's how that works? Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Thank you, Farpoke. Thank you very much. It has been like 15 years since I used Visual Studio on a regular basis. So things have changed a lot since then. And 
I've gotten way more used to the Linux or the Unix and the, the Mac ways of doing it all. <clears throat> okay, so this one, we want the create pre-compiled header file thing. And let's see if the build works now. Yes, I did. I said, thank you, Visual Studio. I haven't thanked Visual Studio enough. Or the developers of Visual Studio. Oh, look, it's, it's doing PC.CPP first, which would make a lot of sense if it's compiling its pre-compiled header file thingy. which I'm guessing it is. Yes, all right, good. We can still do multiprocessing. It's doing two of them at once. And M's an area. Oh, oh, it's working. Set a timer, quick, before it goes any much longer. Oh, what? Well, oh. I guess entity foo.cpp, I don't want to use a pre-compiled header file. Damn it, we're getting errors. Valtry. Oh, it's forcing me to use the pre-compiled header files on things that I that I wouldn't really. Oh, maybe I could just turn it off then. So like for valtry.cpp, this is a hell of a lot faster. Are you guys seeing this? This is freaking ridiculous. We're only at 48 seconds. Not even a minute. It's already into the components. Dude, that's so much wicked faster. Yes. I just got to fix those one few errors there. <clears throat> okay, so that's how you do it. So for anybody that's like, how the hell do you do pre-compiled headers on Windows? That's how you do it. You gotta have, um, you gotta have a, a pre-compiled header file. You also have to have a pre-compiled CPP file, and you have to set up the YC option on the CPP file and the YU option for everything else. And then I'm thinking what happens here for these errors I'm getting. I want to actually go into like, for example, Valtry.cpp and set it so it doesn't use a pre-compiled header file at all. Right, override the option. Let's do that and rebuild and see if that fixed at least Valtry.cpp. I think I had 15 errors before. Let's try turning it off on Entity Foo. Because both Entity Foo and Valtry don't even use the uh, the header files that everything else uses. So these are not even going to be slower by not using a pre-compiled header file. So hope we get 13 errors. Yes, we got 13 errors. We're getting rid of them slowly but surely. All right, so OIS, we don't want to do it for any of OIS, which is all these files. Can we, all, can we do multiple of these at once? No, you can't select, you can't select multiple of these CPP files at once. Wait, am I pressing the wrong button maybe? Control, no, shift. Oh, shift works, but you can't do, Maybe it's just because I'm using a virtual machine. <laughs> yes, we have 13 errors. <laughs> okay, one at a time. Turn it off. Wait, can you turn it off for a folder? No. Doesn't look like it. That would be nice. That's just a filter or whatever. It's Okay. What's up, Kobarni? Am 
Oh my god, did you guys see how fast it built though? That was ridiculous. Compared to ten and a half minutes, it was like one minute. going good man it's going really good I'm just making my windows build faster here Da, 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 da. I wish there was a way to do all these at once. Maybe I oh maybe I should have just short sorted them all. Wait, is that is that possible? If I sort these all, like if I just did this for example, oh, I can't sort them. Oh, okay. I'll just keep doing it the slow way then. So yeah, for anybody joining the stream, <laughs> is it really? <laughs> it's normal size for me. I don't know why it's super size for you guys. <laughs> I'm sure that would be super freaky. Oh man. Yeah, I just did that. I just did that, Jago Gamer. I did that before I started. I was like, can I can I select these multiple at uh, multiple at once? Well, you tried. You're talking about Shift plus Control. Hold on. No, that doesn't work either. There's only a couple more to do anyway. Okay, it's clean. No, let's just build. You're reading through all the info on the main site. I think it's kind of awesome of you to allow streamers, YouTubers to post vids of song beer. Oh, oh, they do. I think they do. A lot of games, a lot of indie devs, at least these days, are allowing that. And it's the default when you do um, when you do your press kit. If you're using press kit, which is uh, Rami Ismail's thing for making it easy to basically um, do a press kit, <laughs> basically. But the default there is to allow monetization permission, I think. Oh, so just kit services that CPP, which I think doesn't need it either. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay, so let's turn that off there. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I think it's like, you know, what's the point of trying to monetize on other people's videos of your game? That's ridiculous. It's something like Nintendo would do. Especially as an indie developer. You're going to go and try and enforce that? No indie developer has the money or the resources to actually go and force every single person out there you know, to to not be able to make money off of their, their game, you know? Yeah, free press, for sure. <laughs> I think it's working! Oh my god, I can't wait to clean this solution and rebuild and see how fast it goes, because this is ridiculous. So much faster. Yeah, exactly. It's free. It's free press, free marketing, right? Okay, we got one more error. Win main. 
unresolved. In what? What's this one mean? What does this mean? Some companies have tried to pull down their own content, right? Oh, thanks, Kovarni. Yeah, and all my videos on YouTube are all marked to not have advertising. So if you ever see advertising during one of my videos, let me know. It shouldn't be that way. Okay, so I think it's 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 calling my main function. And then it's like unresolved external symbol win main. I still don't know what this means exactly. But I let's open up the main.cpp. Main.h. I don't have a main.h. That's weird. So why would it oh oh I got T win main. Oh, is it because I I named it T Win Main? Yeah, right. The fan made games. I know. The laws have changed on that recently too, which is weird. Like we got to this crazy new law. There's some. There's a great video somebody shared with me about it. I'm gonna clean my solution and try again because this is. And I'm gonna time it. See how fast this builds. Go. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a big step, right? But like, I really don't feel like I'm sharing too much. Like, you know, I, I see people's concerns for sharing all of their code and stuff like that. I'm not, but I'm not actually sharing all my code. I am sharing the code I'm working on with you right now but I'm not actually gonna go release all my source code for free. So it's kind of a good balance, right? I get to kind of keep my, my source code closed. Technically it's closed source. And, um, but yet I'm sharing it with you on a daily basis. So you can kind of see what I'm doing, but you can't exactly copy all my work and just go like, you know, abuse that, abuse my, my generosity, I guess. So it's a good balance. And I like to share with people, you know, I like to be on, I like to, to like be, I know this is not face to face, but at least you're seeing my face. So we're kind of directly, we are, that's, we are directly interacting, aren't we? This is more than just indirect interaction. This is direct interaction. I say stuff, you guys can say stuff, and we're interacting right then, live, which is really cool. I hope that one day streaming becomes even more interactive to the point where like if you guys wanted to you could show your face too and I could see your face if I wanted to or if you wanted to share it oh I think I know what's wrong main.cpp needs to have pc.h at the top That could be it. Good, awesome, Kowarni. I'm glad it is. I'm really glad it is. Yeah, right. As a as a as a novice developer, you can see. Okay, this is kind of how you would go about doing something like this, and um, and you can learn a lot that way, right? Whoops. Whoa. What the hell did I do? <laughs> Mac shortcuts do not work in Windows. All right, I think this is what's wrong. Oh, I forgot to stop the build, but oh, there. If I had stopped it, I think it was about 15 seconds ago. That was about two and a half minutes. That is so significant. Compared to ten and a half minutes, that's like ten and a half minutes over two and a half minutes. 
That's like at least 4,000% faster building. And it succeeded! Oh! Let's run it. Let's make sure it works. Yay! I have pre compiled headers on Windows. Even though I had to add an include line to every single source file. Wah, wah. Oh, this is a this is an error I get sometimes because of its it's loading from the network share. But if I run it, I think I can just run it from the folder and it'll be fine. Build Win32 debug. Oh, give it a second. It'll work. Let's rebuild it again. <laughs> I want to do it again. It's so much faster. Build solution. Go. Okay, while it's building, I'm going to check in because I like this. I like what this change has changed. IPCH, do I need that? I'll probably just ignore this. Projects, Windows, IPCH. What's in there? It looks like some temporary files. Yeah. Okay, so I'll add that to my git ignore. You know what's one thing about, is anybody a Vim expert? If anybody's a Vim expert, I wish there was a way you could just press the left arrow or something at the beginning of a line and it would go to the end of the previous line. I'm so used to doing that in, in all these kinds of editors and there's no way, there doesn't seem to be a way to do that. Please help me, somebody who's a Vim expert. So we got projects, windows, pc.cpp, and pc.h. Let's add those. I think I added them to my project as well. <laughs> I wish there was a way I could snap my fingers and instantly memorize how to use Vim. Me too. Oh, I thought it was almost done. But it is, it is getting there. Probably got about a half minute left here, so I can check this in probably. Just review, 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 review. So I added my files to my Xcode project as well. I'm using a pre-compiled header. I named it my own name. Um, okay, so that's how it does its data when it's like, hey, don't use a pre-compiled header here. Oh good, it used it for did it for both release and debug too. That's important. Oh no, everything crashes. Oh no. Two minutes thirty seconds. There we go. Two minutes thirty seven seconds. Once again, significantly faster. We're talking about four thousand or four hundred percent? No, yeah, four thousand percent faster. Ridiculous. Okay, let's do a, a release build now. Make sure that works. Can I just clean Songbringer? Does this clean both re debug and release? Yeah, oh, I think this is just cleaning release. Build. Okay, let's see how fast it goes here. Start. All right, we got some custom conditions for a few files that don't need the pre-CH. Cleaned up the VC proj file, the filters file, I mean.
And then every one of my source files needs this one more line. But that's only like 50 lines of code, I guess, added to the whole project. Not too bad. I'm trying to keep my line count down. Oh, if you want to clean and then build, that's what rebuild does? Oh, really? I didn't know it had that. So that's build, rebuild. Oh, okay. And then I'm guessing rebuild Songbringer would just rebuild the release or whatever is the current um, target or config. And then rebuild solution would rebuild both. Yes, Kovarni, that's what that means. The plus plus is PP. Right, solution then project. Oh, so that, oh, okay. Oh, so that's not necessarily the config. That's just the, the whole project. So by cleaning Songbringer, I did say PP. Uh, oh my god, still so much faster. We're looking at about two minutes here. Man, this is great. I got faster builds on Windows, faster builds on Linux, and as always, fast builds on Mac. <laughs> I love that. I love that emote with the guy going like this. Okay, cool. Let's check us in. Man, this is a really big win. This generating code part takes a minute though, every time. Yeah, you're doing pretty good though, Kavarni. Okay, so after this, I'm gonna work on, um, no, I don't. What is that? Let me look at it. Oh, is it Link? Is it Lonk? What's it from? Tell me. So I know this is um, this is doing a lot of stuff here. It's like choosing whether to inline functions and stuff like that. So I don't really necessarily need this to be faster, but if there is a way to make generating code faster in release builds without sacrificing the speed of the EXE, somebody please let me know, that'd be sweet. Oh, in the bad CDI Zelda games? What are those? What are the bad CDI Zelda games? CDI Zelda, what's that? Really? Produced by Philips? Oh my god, these are actual Zelda games? No way! Uh-huh. <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't know about that, man. That makes me want to play those. Okay, so the release build does take quite a lot longer. It takes about five minutes, and two and a half minutes of it is just generating code. The generating code step where it's like deciding to inline and all that. But, that's a lot better than it was. Oh, they were terrible, but they had unintentionally amazing cutscenes, really? 
Oh man, I wonder if there's like a YouTube video of all the cutscenes. Bet there is. Okay, let's let's run these. Win32 release, just make sure it works. Might get that error again. Oh, that worked. Cool. Oh, this is something that's better too. I made it so that uh, full screen borderless or windowed mode borderless on Windows is a lot better now. It stretches to the whole size of the window or the size of the screen. It's pretty yay. It's running a, a tad bit slow here because I'm streaming and oh and I'm trying to run it at 60 fr no 30. Yeah, it's running a bit slow because I'm in a, a virtual machine and I'm streaming. But it still runs pretty fast. Comparatively. Oh, there is a video! Oh my gosh, this is such a victory! Being able to compile on Windows faster? Yay! Cool, I'm saving this link here. Thanks, Firepub. Opened it in my browser. <laughs> I can already see it. it's probably funny. Alright, cool. Okay, so next step today, I want to work on making it so um, when you get hit with your own fire, you don't get hurt. And same thing if an enemy gets hit with their own fire, they don't get hurt. And they don't get healed either. So some enemies actually get healed from fire, and uh, that's a bad thing because they can just basically get infinite health if they heal themselves with their own fire and they can just drop fire. So, um, that's what I'm going to work on. Basically making it so elemental effects don't affect your own team. Oh, the Mac version's got to recompile because all these CPP files have got that include PC.h, which doesn't do anything. It's totally fine. Pretty sure. Pretty sure they use defined Win32. Panda Bazooka. How did that end up happening? Well, there's an enemy to the fire boss, I'll show you. He um, he can drop fire, and fire currently hits both teams, so like foes and friends. And that's and because the fire boss has a property where he can heal from any kind of fire, he gets healed from his own fire. So I just need to make it so that basically elemental effects don't affect the same team. Oh, so this one's using underscore win32. Okay, so... Let's get the player all the fire. We need all the fire! All the fiery weapons and stuff. 
So we get the fire top at the fire bomb, the fire blink, and the fire sword. And we'll start off in sort of a friendly place. Start off in a friendly place. I want to be somewhere without these guys that shoot you from the water. They're not friendly. This place could do. What's up, Krasner? Yes. Okay, so we got fire. If I get hit by it, I'm gonna be hit. But if it, you did basically you take damage from your own fire. So I need to code it now. So basically, when you um, when you hurt, get hit by your own fire, you don't get hurt. But when an enemy gets hit by fire, your fire, it does, and vice versa. Okay. So that's gonna be an apply elements. I think I already have everything kind of set up for this. It's just this little bit right here where, cause fire is kind of a tricky thing because fire Fire creates entities, so when something gets hit by fire, it gets lit on fire, which basically means that a fire entity is created, and that entity is a separate entity which can damage things and stuff. So fire works a lot more uniquely than any of the other elements. Um, so, but here's the relevant bit of code where it's got this thing where it can chain, where you get damaged by a fire entity that has been created. This is it right here. So. I think I'm just going to do something like same team. I think they already did that. Where it checks out shot foe. Here it is. This is it. Oh, it's already trying to do this. Don't apply elements to self or team. Uh, Krasner, you can see every day of this project. So if you check out, um, there's YouTube. Let's see if, uh, is, is Botfu here today? No, but Krasner, check this out. All the videos are all up on YouTube. I think this is the link here. You can actually watch this project, the whole thing from day one, if you want. Here's the link. What about translating the game? Are you going to buy it from a company? No, um, there's already people that are translating it that have agreed. No, no, there's several languages already. There's English, there's German, there's Portuguese. Um, but a lot of people have already committed to doing other translations too. Spanish. I think there's already a Russian translation. Yeah, what do we got? Italian, French, Polish. So basically, a long time ago, like about a year ago, I was like, I needed, I needed people to translate. So I was like, hey, anybody that wants to translate, you get a free copy of the game at this point. Yeah, there you go, Krasner. Nice, man. I hope it helps. Let's leave it on Italian for now. Equip on Gimento. Oh, see, I did this already. I wanted to make it so you don't get hurt by elements if it's your if you're on the same team.
Huh, why doesn't that work? Uh, yeah, well, thanks. I think there's already somebody committed to doing Russian. Um, but if that person falls through... Uh, Farpok, yeah, if you, if you want to do Swedish, you're totally welcome to, man. You can translate into English a second time. Nice, man. Uh, Farpok, yeah, if you really want to, um, you're, feel free to email me. And I, but the only thing I can really give you is a free copy of the game, the beta version. Um, oh, but I can also make you, I can also make your name in gold on the, uh, on the game. So on the main menu, there's a few, um, there's a few backers that are listed in gold. So your name would be in gold. So I guess it's not just giving you a free copy of the game. So yeah, at the bottom of the screen there, there's some it shows people's backer names and stuff. Thanks, Krasner. Appreciate it, man. Yep, I do all my own programming, my own art, and my own music and sound effects. Um, so I draw a lot of I draw the art in um, in Photoshop mostly. Actually, all yeah, all in Photoshop, and I do my sound effects in Ableton with a with a synthesizer called Massive mostly, and I also use this little tool called Buffixer, which is a fun thing to make sound effects with. Rocket Bunny's on that list. He is. Thanks, Kovarni. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm I'm really curious why this isn't working already because. I already, I already wrote some code for this, and it's definitely not working. So we'll call this one bool is friend. Um, this one will be changer friend. Are you entirely finished with art? No, not at all. I'm not entirely finished with any of it. We'll call this one is foe. And this one is changer foe. And now set a breakpoint. So if it if this is a friend. I'm gonna set a breakpoint and then I'll create some fire in the game and then get hit by my own fire and figure out why it's not working. Like I knew I coded this already. The fire should have a category of shot friend. Uh, I got hit by a guy I didn't want to... Damn it! Ah, uh, it's not working. I only want to do this when I get hit by fire. How often do I stream art? Ah, uh, it depends. Totally depends. I don't know, maybe once a week? Sometimes six days a week? It really depends on what phase of the game I'm in. But like I just I just sent a link up there to all the YouTube videos and all the YouTube videos are up there and a lot of them you can kind of like you can look at the titles and see whether I'm mostly working on art that day or or code or or sometimes music. Art and music are definitely not as time consuming as programming. Programming is the most time consuming thing of all. That's why I'm mostly doing programming. What's up Proton? <laughs> Wizard Who, I love that. Makes me think of the band. Okay, let's do Changer Fire. So if the Changer entity has fire, we'll set a breakpoint so it doesn't break when I'm just doing 
when I'm getting hit from those other guys. So if is friend and changer fire. Let's do that breakpoint. Yes, okay, good. We got a break. What the hell? Why is it? Where are you? Okay, his friend is true. That's right. Okay, so we're... This is the main hero. Definitely not his foe. Change your friend? False. That's the problem. Change your friend should be true. We get change your fire, but not change your friend. How could it have lost its... I wonder if it lost at the flag or if it never had the flag. What's up, Geek Alvaro? You discovered. Oh, nice, man. Right on. Greetings. Thank you for saying have a nice day. Appreciate it, man. Okay. Uh. Let's go to the point where it creates the fire and see what category it's using. Area dot create fire. Nice. So this create fire function, it creates an entity and it, it creates either a zero light or a fire smart. It creates a fire smart if it's a damaging entity and that's what it's doing right here. It's creating a damaging separate entity. So it should be setting original category and category to category, whatever that is. Let's just see right here what that category is. Like has fire, change your friend or whatever. So has bits category. Any of those, then it still be true. Any of these, will have change your foe. We can set a breakpoint right here and verify, is it actually creating it with those bits or not? I kind of wish programming was less time consuming because I love doing art and music more. Do I love it more? I don't know. I love, them. I love all three of those things so much. That's why I'm a game developer because I love doing this. But I do wish there was a little bit more balance to it all to the time spent making games. Okay, there, it's creating a fire entity and it should be creating it from, yeah, the apply elements function. Tell me about it, right? Yes. Change your friend false, change your foe false. What? What's up with this? Why did this category not get Oh, did I not view this as binary? What bits does this even have? It only has one, no, two bits. It does have two bits. What two bits did it add? 
I know debugging code is the sometimes the most time consuming of all. Yeah, you do have to enjoy it all, don't you? Because if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to stick with it. Flood! What's up, Flood? How you been, man? Okay, well... I would like to go backwards to the function that called this. I'm working on my game too. How's your game going, man? Okay, so we should be adding Adding the shot friend. Maybe it's because changer is the wrong thing. Okay, so we start off with category fire, and that sets this one bit right here. Now, if we have bits friend or shot friend or blink or top at or ghost or bomb we should be adding that ah, see there it didn't do it because changer changer is not the right thing what's changer oh this might be the oh it's, it's probably the top hats it's probably the top hat it's collision entity Which should have K filter top hat. This is crazy. Why? What's going on wrong here? So we only have two bits set. This is bit one, two, three, right? Zero, shift it up zero, one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You polish your collision? Nice, man. Right on. So this is cat oh category. Okay, filter. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eleven. This is filter switch. Filter switch. Maybe that's shot, supposed to be shot neutral. So if that's eleven, then this is twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, which would be empty. So that's definitely not it. You recount that. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. These flags appear to be messed up, but they can't be. That would be switch and empty.
What changer entity is this? How the hell would I know? Oh, debugging. In this bit of code, shouldn't the changer, yeah, changer should have category fire. We just verified that. Oh my god. Oh, dude, I see the bug. What a dumbass bug. Sometimes you feel like a complete idiot. This is one of those times. I feel like a complete idiot right now. Has anybody seen it? Anybody see what that bug is? I'm trying to compare the changer's collision flags, but I really should be co comparing the changer's collision category. Duh. Okay. Let's see what happens without any breakpoints now. Oh my god, that one's a forehead slapper. All right, Kavarian, good night, man. Oh, good, my fire, the fire didn't hurt me. Yeah, it works. Oh, that's pretty cool. What about the blink? Yeah, same thing. You can't get hurt by your own fire anymore. Oh! So good. What about the bomb? See, I, I'm in the blast radius. Oh, see, it did transfer the fire to me. But wait. It transferred the fire to me, but do I actually get hurt by the fire? No, that's good. Oh man, this is great. What's up, Calden619? 619, are you from San Diego? Welcome to the stream, man. See me sit to Coraggio. Oh man, this is a brand new day right here. Getting that to work. Let's see how it applies to the, the fire boss. I should be able to throw away this whole scaffolding. Now I'm wondering if I did that anywhere else. Such an easy bug fix once you know what's going on. Okay, let me make sure that's simple, how it was. One simple change, yes, it's just that. Okay. 
Let's fight the fire boss. See if he gets healed by his own fires anymore. It's probably going to be in Stungeon 4. So maybe this is it here. 3, 4, 4. Oh, this is the Murloc. Okay, good. If I get hurt by an enemy's fire and it spawns a fire entity, I will continue to get hurt by that fire. That's good. Oh, these little guys don't even get fire spawned on them, though, because they're already fiery. I'm coding a game. This game's called Songbringer. Okay, what I want to see here is does the fire boss get healed? He does get healed from your fire, but does he get healed from his own fire? Which means I need to, I need to turn off all fiery items. So I just am seeing only his fire. So I'm gonna turn off the fire top hat, fire bomb, fire blink, and the fire sword. Turn off all those. So it's just his fire. And then, yeah, and then I should try and get him to stop like halfway so he gets kind of stuck on his own fire. Oh, there, he's getting healed. Dang. Oh, okay, this don't apply elements thing. Oh. Okay, it's a couple things need to happen here. This bit of code needs to be a little smarter because I want it to only apply if there's elements being applied. Um, so this needs to be has bits on the changer dot collision dot category. We need to see if it has either K filter fire or K filter ice or poison or lightning or fear and then um, then we can make it so we can't even get healed by your own stuff so if a friend is trying is trying to heal itself with an element, it won't even apply. Same thing here. So now the fire boss should not be able to heal himself. How long did it take to make this game? So far, it's been about two years. Full time. Seven days a week. Yeah, he's 
definitely still getting healed. Which, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I think I know why. Because the fire smart is what he's spawning. But the fire smart by default has shot neutral. So if I give it shot foe by default, because every other instance of creating or using fire smart, every other, well, wait a minute, no. Oh, wait, no, no, yeah. Okay, that works because um, the other the other way that Fire Smart gets created is from the create fire function, and that applies the category using the equals. So it just gives it whatever category you're giving it. So it's going to overwrite completely whatever category it had. So it's going to overwrite shop foe fire with whatever's passed in. So that'll work. It's going to pass in either shot neutral friend or foe dynamically. Or else, it's, if it's if an entity creates a fire smart via its AI, it will by default be shot foe, which should make sense. Is this my first major game? Uh, no. Well, it's not my first major game that I've worked on, but it is my first major solo game. So this is the first project that I've ever worked on where I've done everything myself and it being a major project. I've never really worked on small projects. I've always worked on more major projects. But in teams, always in teams. And that's the thing, I never really believed in myself. I never, ever believed that I could be an artist. I never believed I could be a musician. And that stopped me from making my own games for years and years and years. I always believed I had to be a part of a team. And just getting rid of that, just getting rid of that one single belief caused me to make Sombrier. So, that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing these streams. It's because I want people to believe that they can do it too. That you don't have to be stopped by what other people tell you is possible with your own creativity. You might actually have abilities that you never knew you had until you just start trying them, you know? So, I'll, I will say that message over and over again as much as I possibly can. This is working! He's not getting healed by his own fire anymore! Awesome. Yeah, it takes drive and effort, but also belief. If you don't believe that you actually can, you won't. Oh man, this is great. Finally, finally, fire isn't so... I don't know. It's less natural, I guess, because fire would normally hurt you no matter what. So now it doesn't hurt you or heal you if it's your own team. Okay, so I guess now I should check and make sure if he gets hit with fire from me that he does get healed. So we can do the fire sword's a good good one for that. Well, no, it's actually not, because then you can't really tell if it's the sword or the ghost sword. We'll do the top hat. Yeah, there he's getting healed from it. But he's not getting healed from his own fire. Yeah. to implement. I started implementing this code last night. I'm like, how am I going to do this? Obviously made a pretty <laughs> stupid mistake as you all saw with that flags versus category thing.
dangerous weapon. Trying to zoom to the right point. All right, that works, and that's gonna be it for today's stream. So, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Got two pretty important things accomplished today. Got the pre-compiled headers to work on Windows, mm -hmm. which is significantly faster building, and now there's uh, the effect where um, elemental effects don't affect your own team, which is pretty great. So you can't be hurt by your own fire, or an enemy can't be healed by its own fire, for example. So, thanks a lot for watching, everybody, and I appreciate you all, as usual. See you all next time.